Okay, so it's Saturday, it's 2.30, and today I'm looking at ways that you can take your everyday experiences or goings on and turn them into a piece of art so that every day you have something to draw. I'm hoping things are a bit easier than last time. I'm still trying to get the hang of drawing and talking at the same time. I wasn't entirely happy with how the spread turned out last time. Also, today's episode is probably going to be a bit shorter than last time, um, so I'd love to know how you guys prefer it. These first two episodes will have been pre-recorded while I'm in Mexico, so once I get back, I'll be able to take on any of your feedback. I'm still playing catch-up in this sketchbook, filling in gaps of missed daily drawings where I've had ideas but not had the time to execute them. So this spread that I'm doing right now is based on a night out that I had back in April. I'm planning on drawing possibly like a panorama of the venue of the event and I thought this would be a good time to talk about illustrating experiences. This was a week in my quest for consistent drawing where I was starting to feel like I needed a go-to backup prompt so that I could always have an idea of what to draw. And what easier prompt is there than draw something that happened today? Reason being, every day is different, even in the slightest of ways, you'll always have something new to draw. You can even use the repetitive aspects of your day as a theme to draw from. The artist Liz Steele, who has the most awe-inspiring collection of completed sketchbooks, um, years upon years of daily sketches and visual records of what she's done. I'll leave a link to her website below, she's also on YouTube, but among all her drawings and paintings there are tons of drawings of her coffee that day. Sometimes in different teacups, but always the same thing. It's such a clever go-to idea to make sure you never have that stalling moment of staring at a blank page and not knowing what to do with it. So that's why you're daily, drawing your daily experiences um, has got to be one of the easiest and simplest art prompts that you can give yourself. The difficult part is the what and the how. What part of your day, what if you didn't do anything, and even if you did do something, how can you show that in a sketch? How can you draw an activity or an experience or a feeling? I'm gonna talk about the how first, in the sense of how to find inspiration in the everyday stuff. Um, I'll talk about the practical how of how to draw it out in a bit. So the first thing would obviously be that you have to experience things in order to have experiences to draw from. This particular day that I'm drawing from um, really could have been any other day in my life. I'm very routine oriented. Um, you really can't get a more repetitive, monotonous day than mine, and that's how I like it. So I was just doing my usual um, packing orders, responding to emails and things. I did some tidying. I had just got back from New York, so I had a lot of washing to put away. And had I not had plans for that evening, that really could have been my whole day. I could have just ended the day with some admin -y stuff, watched a bit of telly, and gone to bed. So I think it's important 
to look at how to start recognising noteworthy moments in the most monotonous of days. I always have some kind of go-to questions for myself at the end of the day to see what bits could potentially stand out. So things like, what did I eat? Even if you have the same meals every day, which I don't think many people do, you could draw that again and again the same way that Liz Steele does her coffee. Instant, consistent drawing idea. Remember, this is all about not giving yourself room to stall when it comes to drawing as much as you can. You don't want the excuse of like, I didn't know what to draw. Other things, what was the weather like? Um, did I listen to or watch anything today? I am addicted to shopping online, so I always ask myself, did I get any deliveries today? Uh, what did I wear? Now, on this particular day, as I was going out, my, um, my day took a detour out of the routine, and I ended up getting changed. I got ready. Um, so in your head, you should be getting into the habit of recognising little variations in each day. It's great for daily drawing, obviously, but also it really helps with just general mindfulness, um, being aware of your day and not feeling like you're drifting from day to day. So I got changed and even that little thing, that's an element that I could draw from. It was a top I've never worn. Nothing's too mundane. That's a really important point. Learn to look at your life through the eyes of an artist. So that's the how to always have an experience to draw from in your day, even if you don't do anything. Once you've discovered the standout thing from your day, the next hardest part is um, how you're going to draw it. Because experiences are hard to translate onto paper. So here are my suggestions. First of all, it doesn't have to be literal. Remember that all you're trying to do is give yourself something to draw. Once you've got an idea, you can do anything with it. You could try abstracting the idea, taking a word or theme from your day and drawing that. If the highlight of this day for me was that I wore this new top, I could just draw the top. I could also draw the pattern from the top or I could fill a page with other floral patterns. The first thing that I did on this page, because I was saving this page to record memories of this night specifically, um, the only thing that I could think to do at the time was stamp the um, stamp it with the, you know, when you go to an event and they stamp your wrist so that you can come in and out. Um, I had the stamp on me at the time, so I stamped myself so I could get in for free, and I also stamped my sketchbook. And there's nothing wrong with that as a starting point, sticking things in. Um, if it helps you to break up the blankness of a page and you have something relevant to stick in, then I would say go for it. It's a step in the right direction for your drawing experience. 
But in terms of the actual drawing, since that is obviously the whole point, one idea would be to draw like a snapshot of the scene, like if you decided to draw the part of the day where you're waiting for your bus, you could literally draw you at the bus stop like um, like a screenshot from a film or a panel in a comic strip, you at the bus stop. This night that I went to, um, the Big Steez, it's part of a big collaborative movement, events and things to showcase the talents of musicians, artists, um, poets, all sorts, uh, mainly in South East London. They've been putting on nights like this since about 2011, I've been going to them since about 2011. And I think sometimes the more eventful a night is, or the more unique and interesting that your day turns out to be, the harder it might actually be to capture. This was a night with so many different dimensions. Amazing music, talent, collaboration and creativity. How to capture the atmosphere of that in a drawing can be a challenge. Um, how to do it justice and how to sum it up in one image. What I'm doing, which is another suggestion of what to draw from your day, is I'm drawing kind of the scene, but mainly the location, the setting. Um, in this case, I don't think just a snapshot would do it justice. So. My go-to daily drawing, the thing that I tend to do if I am stuck for an idea, is to draw the room I was in or the surroundings. In terms of portraying feelings, especially if it were an empty room you were drawing, um, that's where you would have freedom of creativity, I guess, to use colours or by exaggerating certain elements. In this particular drawing, I want to portray some of the busyness of the night, um, the movement, that's why I've got people in some interesting positions, just the general vibe and atmosphere of a crowded pub. And I'll probably get into that a bit more with uh, the colours I decide to use a bit later on. I'm thinking quite dark blues, purples, um, maybe a bit of warmth in there as well. So to recap quickly why you should be drawing from everyday experiences. Um, one is that you will always have something to draw. The next one would be that it teaches you to be mindful of everyday moments. Um, and then for what to draw, ask yourself what was different about today and focus on the repetitive things. Then in terms of how to then turn that idea into a drawing, I would say draw it like the snapshot of a scene or draw your surroundings. So that's what we've talked about so far. I normally wouldn't put so many little details into a drawing, but... In this case, I think it just adds to the feel of the busyness. And then for some other ideas, you can focus on specific aspects. So if you're more comfortable drawing people, draw someone that was there or draw someone that you spoke to that day. Or one specific detail. So like today it's raining, I could draw um, the way that the raindrops fall down a window.
on one of my more recent uneventful days, actually earlier this week, um, the one standout moment from the day was that a wasp ended up in my bathroom, so I ended up doing a page of studies of wasps. Hmm. Happy with that. So snapshot surroundings, faces, food, or details. This is more a prompt in the sense that you're giving yourself something to think about. You're training yourself to generate ideas differently. And you're training yourself to see the world differently. I watch Catfish almost every day. Um, I could do studies of literal catfish or I could draw Neve and Max. I could draw my TV or the remote or I could think more conceptually about the act of catfishing itself and see if I could come up with a piece based on that. So finally, um, for the more practical side of how to record things, well, there are three ways I would say that you can approach it. You could draw from your imagination, um, you could draw from a photo or a reference, or you could draw from life, so looking at what's right in front of you and draw from that. And none of these ways, you know, no one is better than the other. I can't tell you how many comments I get from people who struggle to draw without reference and then they feel bad for it, for using references for their art. Like, it takes away the authenticity or means they're less talented. Every artist that you know of hasn't spent their entire career drawing from their own imagination. It just doesn't work like that. You have to draw from reference in order to learn. You need to give yourself a starting point to go from. So do whatever you're comfortable with. Don't let anyone tell you that you're doing it wrong. Remember that your goal was to draw something today. today. <laughs> so however you achieved it, you achieved it. And drawing as often as possible is gonna catapult you to the level that you wanna be at. Ooh, it's getting late guys, it's like, Four o'clock already. The time is just going so quickly. I just finished having my lunch and um, I don't know if you heard the doorbell earlier if I edited that out but some family friends came round earlier on and they brought round their puppy for me to meet um, and they brought round their other dog as well just for me to hang out with. Um, but yeah I spent a lot of time doing that and I've just been in and out of doing this drawing for the last couple of hours and that's one of the reasons why when people ask me how long a typical page or drawing takes I don't have like a straight answer for it because I'm always up and down and out of breath from coming up the stairs um it's just yeah up and down and doing bits and bobs in between but yeah we're gonna crack on get this get this going get back on with it did have a good time hanging out with those little doggies though See, that could be my highlight of the day, little doggos. That's why you just have to always, always be open to seeing the interesting side of even the most silly little things.
so anyway, I've lost my train of thought now. I think I've basically covered all the things I wanted to say in this video anyway. That is essentially my key to always having something to draw every day. There are different ways as well, there are different prompts that you could use, I'll probably cover those in later videos. But yeah, in terms of using the prompt of drawing your experiences, that is how I approach it, those are the things that I would draw, that's how I would do them, and obviously that's what I'm doing today. So it would be cool to know if any of you do something similar, or if you would consider it now that I've spoken about it, um, and you know, what kinds of things you might draw from your day or what particular thing you might focus on. You know, I don't know if this did turn out to be shorter than the last one. I hope you don't mind. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, thank you so much for watching. I will be back soon, back back, with the next video and hopefully a good tan. So I will see you then. Bye.